Okay, so today is the big day. Today is where the building is done, and we're going to go ahead and show you guys all the nitty gritty things to this building from the outside in. And it's crazy to think that two and a half, three months ago, we started this thing, and all we were doing was the dirt work, and we were digging a hole, and now it's a full on hog barn. It's crazy, and I'm super, super blessed and happy and excited to get this journey started. What do you think? Today is a great day. So, I think I'm more excited for this one than I was uh, when I built my first barn because this represents the next generation and for me to get the opportunity to farm every day with one of my sons is a dream come true and this is what's making it possible. So, I'm super hyped. You know, we do a lot of the same things every day and a lot of it's real mundane. But then every once in a while you get a day like this where you make a big step, and today is definitely a big step. It it needs to be celebrated. And I tried, I tried to find a giant glass bottle of bush light to christen, but the best I could come up with was corn cans. Cheers to you. Cheers to PSI for making it all happen. And cheers to you guys because we couldn't do it without you and we we really value you guys coming along and watching us grow and watching us figure this out and we're just getting started so it's going to get better so to start off our hog barn tour we're going to come to these bins right here these bins are 12 foot diameter wide 26 ton bins, about a semi load of feed, which makes it easy to order feed because you don't have to do any measurements or anything like that. They're an AP bin out of Assumption, Illinois. These can be one of the most frustrating things associated with pig farming because if one of these bins gets hung up during the cold months of the year, you're freezing your butt off and you're out here scooping you know, a clump of feed out of the bin, can be very frustrating but you got to have them one of these bins when the pigs are big enough will last three days and that allows you to have six days worth of feed left and then immediately when we switch bins we order it we have an app on our phones and that gives the feed mill three days to get the feed here so all our other bins we have what's called a bin vibrator on it and what that does is it really just automatically vibrates a bin anytime it hangs up which saves us a ton of time and headaches uh, we don't have any bin vibrators on these bins yet. That's definitely something I want to invest in in the future because, like I said, it saves us a ton of time. This is one of our 24-inch pit fans. There's four of these on each side of the building, eight total, and they run in pairs. The shutters are made so you can pull them out and clean. We'll clean these shutters and we'll spray these out a couple times a year. They kind of live in a horrible environment because these fans are always exhausting the air right off the pit, which helps uh, keep the air fresher in the building, but they're always running in that air and so they have kind of a tough life But they're built they're built really well stainless steel fasteners molded fiberglass transitions the pump out covers are um, vinyl plank stainless steel rivets They're really built to hold up and one thing that's a little bit different I guess on the way our buildings work is when we start pigs we have two fans running, but they're, they're programmed on the control that they rotate. So in other words, two fans will run, and then after 10 minutes, they'll flip and the other two will run. That way you balance where you're pulling air out of the pit, and you balance how much run time you have on your motors so they all wear evenly. Um, and that's a really nice feature. We really like that. So this right here is our tunnel curtain machine, uh, also made by AP out of Assumption, Illinois. And this is what opens and closes our tunnel curtain. I'll show you guys kind of inside of it real quick. If I can get it open, there we go. It's got a motor hooked up to it, and this motor pretty much controls this screw right here. And this screw lets out cable or pulls in cable, and that either opens or closes the curtain. So this is all does this all automatically. The best thing about building a solid sided barn like this versus my dad's first two barns, we have to do a lot of maintenance on these curtains because these cables tend to break after years of having a barn. And I mean, it's just inevitable, but not having a natural curtain on the side of this barn 
is going to be really, really nice because we're going to have a lot, lot, lot less maintenance. We only have two current machines we got to ever mess with on this barn. One on that north side and one on this south side. So I'll take that over messing with the natural curtains any day. So we're walking down along the tunnel end. So this is the west end of our barn. The fans are on the east end. This tunnel curtain has three rows of pipe. Actually, it's only got two rows of pipe in it. So there's pockets in it to slide pipe. And we don't have any in this bottom because it doesn't really matter once it gets down that far. But that's just in here for extra weight because when those fans start, especially when the curtains are new, you have pressure pulling against this. And if you don't have a little weight in the curtain, it'll hang up and it won't slide down and open. And then you'll be starving for air. So that's what these pipes are for. This is our gas line coming over from the tank. Blue regulator goes to the big heaters and this red regulator goes to the brooder heaters. This is bigger pipe and you need less pressure but more volume. This, for the brooder heaters, is less volume but at a higher pressure. I think I didn't butcher that. I think that's right. So right here, as you can see, we got three kind of main things here. We got our LP tanks. These LP tanks are a thousand gallons each. We burn about a thousand gallons every time we start pigs. But to start a new barn off fresh, there's no manure in the pit, so you have a lot more space you got to heat up. So we might burn a little bit more than a thousand gallons to start this first group of pigs in this barn. We have a second tank for backup, just in case we ever have a problem with LP and we can't buy LP or that LP take, tank takes a crap, we have another one on hand for backup. Over here, we got our 80 kW generator. It's got a John Deere diesel uh, engine in it. We have this generator for any time that the power goes out in this barn. Really good idea to have a generator. And this over here is where we get our power for our building. And it's also where the transfer switch is. Those are our lineup of things. And then over there, that's our crappy wagon that we probably need to get rid of that we just put junk in when we need to haul it to the dump. This is the chute, so all the pigs that come in and all the pigs that go out, go out through here. This chute is very similar to our other ones. I mean, as far as the dimensions go, there's just a few things that are a little bit different. So because this building is an EPS package instead of a Lester package, this is an EPS door versus a Plyco door because Lester's uses Plyco. And I really like the door. It's nice. It has two heavy poles on it so you can pull it up from either side and then instead of us just having a hole drilled in the in the stud with a pin in it it has this really nice deal that holds it I'll show you how that works when you undo it you pull it up and then that holds the door the only thing that I have some questions about on this door so my plyco doors they're wrapped all the way around. This, they send them unfinished on the bottom so they can cut them to whatever height they need in case your opening isn't exactly right, which is nice for the guy putting it in, but over time, I just wonder whether this is gonna delaminate, and I think we'll try to put some kind of a cap on it. I'm not sure how we're gonna do that, but I just would feel better if this was covered. But other than that, I really, I like it going to work good. And behind this door is the workroom, but I'm not going to show you the workroom today because it's a disaster. We're still building the walls and getting it finished out. And we'll make a video about that. Every, every barn I've done, the workroom's gotten a little better. And now then this one is, this is the best that we've done yet. It's, it's going to be pretty nice, but we're not quite, we're not quite there yet. Now we're in the center of our building, and this is like the intersection where all the magic happens as far as moving things and all that stuff. So what we have in our other barns is we have these this this center alleyway. It's a lot tighter, but in this barn we figured out we wanted to extend this post out a little further to free up some more room. So normally that post would probably sit right here, but we went 12 inches with it, so now it sits here. I'll just show you how it looks when we extended it out that way. So normally, we're gonna move pigs from where Dad's sitting. We would shut this gate so the pigs don't run towards the other room. And then we would shut this gate so we don't run up, want to run down that way. 
it, the pigs will just flow a lot better through here. They have a lot more room to maneuver this corner and go straight towards the chute. Normally, this is where the pigs get kind of slowed up because this corner is too tight and they can't go as fast. But I think with this extra space, we'll be able to move pigs a lot better. As you can see, either we got giant wiener pigs or the timestamp's not quite right on this part of the video. And we did not get giant wiener pigs. We had a little mishap with our filming and we lost our footage of the most important part of the whole thing, which is the foundation that the pigs run on, and that's the slats. So this barn has slats from Custom Precast, and they're from Cascade, Iowa. Each slat that they lay is, is four foot wide and 10 foot long and there are five runs of slats. So a room's 50 foot wide or 100 wide is the whole building. So in the building, there's 10 rows of slats that go through it. And Customs been building slats. I don't know how long they've been doing it, but they're really good at it. A great product. When you buy the building from PSI, it's, it's Customs crew that comes and their trucks haul them and then they set them and do everything to make sure that they're right. And they do a great job. All our barns have them. My first barn is just over 10 years old and really can't tell much for wear at all on them, which is great because it's an expensive thing to replace when they do need to be replaced. And at some point, like everything, they will need to be replaced, but um, they hold up real well. On top of these slats, we pour a four inch feeder pad and that's just to take the wear that the pigs are gonna put out coming in and out of the feeder instead of having that on the slats we have them on these pads. And it's a lot easier to repair epoxy or if you have to replace that pad than it is to replace this slat. So that's why we have those on there. 